Hello and welcome to our fourth installment of September. We are going to experience a bit of a vibe shift today and it is all my fault because I decided to research. But let's start at the beginning. Our cemetery today is All Face Cemetery in Middle Village, Queens. Such a medieval name. We entered through the main gate, finally, and enjoyed the beautiful cemetery architecture. As I started my sojourn, I really didn't know what we'd talk about, but then, bada bing, bada boom. These funereal fences had the most beautiful metal sculpted tassels. I don't remember ever seeing them at other cemeteries. I love these barriers with little gates and tassels. They are very similar to the emotional boundaries that I set up in my own relationships. They just don't do much, but they're nice to look at. And that's where our good vibes ended and things begin to take a turn. Because it was impossible not to notice that this cemetery is in a different state of care than all of the other cemeteries we've seen. It's beautiful, and I love that abandoned aesthetic as much as the next peasant. But this was years and years of large areas not being maintained at all. And it's not an abandoned cemetery. It's very much still functioning, presumably. And I was genuinely confused at how this could happen. So I went home that night and was looking up a map. And I noticed these articles about a 2019 lawsuit that the New York Attorney General brought against certain board members and executives of all face cemeteries. And I know I said I wasn't going to research, but once I learned about this lawsuit, I couldn't stop. And this case is still ongoing, so everything I'm going to say is alleged. It hasn't been proven in court. I read several of the articles and then eventually started reading the lawsuit itself to understand what was going on, because I got very curious. And I'm going to give you some of the highlights. One of the cemetery defendants was given a $900,000 retirement gift, allegedly, and then continued to work for several years and received a salary did not retire. This cemetery salary at one point reached $325,000. Another cemetery defendant embezzled thousands of dollars in unauthorized performance bonuses, allegedly. Other defendants in the lawsuit used the cemetery funds to give loans to family members of up to $500,000, allegedly. I don't understand how cemetery maintenance works, of course. But what I thought was very interesting was in a 2018 article, a reporter with the Queen's Daily Eagle, Jonathan Sperling, went and visited the cemetery. And the article starts by saying that locals thought that maybe there had been vandalism because the cemetery looked so poorly in sections. And then he went and spoke to one of the defendants in the 2019 lawsuit. And from what the article is saying, I'm paraphrasing, that they said, no, it's due to a lack of funds. The cemetery does not have the money to maintain all of this space. Well, what was extra interesting is that he said it's because a lot of these plots were sold to poor people who didn't pay enough for the perpetual care. And so this is the quote that really stuck out. The now defendant says, funds paid for perpetual care on some grave sites cannot be used to maintain grave sites that haven't paid. To do so otherwise would be committing a misdemeanor. Which again, no legal experience. But all of these other cemeteries, huge cemeteries, Calvary Cemetery has 3 million graves, Mount Olivet Cemetery, Greenwood, of course, St. John's Cemetery, which I just visited, Holy Cross Cemetery in Flatbush. All of these cemeteries maintain the entire grounds beautifully, whereas what this person is alleging is that he's risking criminal activity if he maintains the graves of people who haven't paid. And maybe that's true. I'm just curious why these other cemeteries... I know that nearly every single other problem in the world is more important, and I do agree, and especially so because it affects people who aren't dead. But for some reason, my brain decided to hyperfixate on this situation for about 72 hours. I already have our next cemetery chosen. It's one I know like the back of my hand, and it is going to put us back on the right path. And one last thing, Donald Trump's parents and grandparents are both buried in this cemetery.